everyone, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks. We're back in the uh, Sea Dreamer uh, workshop. Uh, I've got the stack dado head set um, in, set up in the uh, table saw for routing out the grooves for our, our uh, shaft log. Um, got about five eighths, inch, five eighths of an inch worth of uh, stack set in there. Um, I'm choosing to do it this way. You could do it with a router. I mean, you could go old school and use a hand plane, you know, a routing plane. But I think this is the most accurate and easiest way to do it. Um, I've already set up my fence the appropriate width to uh, compensate to get us on the far edge of the cut. We're going to run um, each uh, half of the shaft log through on one setting so that we are making sure we have equal cuts on, uh, on both pieces. And then when we, make, when we move the fence, then we'll run the pieces through on that cut as well. So nothing too complicated, it's just um, we wanna make sure we work off one setting and do all our cuts while uh, it's set up so we make sure it's right and the same. And then we'll get started. So we made our cut farthest from the fence and now we're going to make our close nearest to the fence and then we can basically adjust the fence without any measurements just to plow out the rest. Now I'm using a full uh, inch and three eighths depth cut with a stack dado head. That's a lot to ask of your table saw and if I was doing furniture, you know, something that required maybe a little bit better finish, I would not go at this at one pass. I would uh, you know, run through maybe half inch, three quarters of an inch, uh, reset, raise it up, and then run it through again. But this doesn't have to have a perfect finish inside. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's never going to be seen. It just has to be um, dimensionally correct, and that's what we're shooting for here. So we'll run the next side through uh, and get started. <laughs> Two and three quarter inch wide groove by a depth on each half of an inch and three eighths which put together gives us two and three quarter inches of depth and uh, you, yes it's square um, on a production yacht obviously this would be uh, a circle but if you read George's book it's pretty funny how you know he describes it saying you know round it out if you feel like it so um, I saw another build where they did the exact same thing I'm not that concerned about it I don't think it's that big of a deal um, so here we are Gives us a little wiggle room for if there's any flex in the shaft. I mean, I hope there's no flex in the shaft, but if there is, you know, there's still a little wiggle room inside. Um, what I'm gonna do now is take these apart and I'm going to put a couple coats of epoxy on each half on inside the shaft log just to waterproof it, maybe three. Um, and then once that dries and cures totally, I will then glue this this all together with the resource and all glue and um, that'll be that. And that'll be our first piece done. So we got each half cut out and uh, ready for a coat of epoxy. Got the first coat of epoxy on yesterday. Let it sit overnight to get a tack going so that it'll chemically bond to the second coat, which I did this morning uh, before I went to work. And then now we're out here tonight and I'm just uh, gonna get ready to sand off uh, the little drips of epoxy they got on the sides here. And then we'll do a glue up with um, resistor and all and this baby will be done. So we'll get started. Just using some alcohol as a tack cloth, denatured alcohol, 
just to get the dust out after sanding. It's always good practice before you put any kind of glue or finish on something. And then just one final brush out to get the last of the dust and clean out the inside of the old shaft log here because in a few minutes it's never going to see the light of day again. I'm going to make up a smaller batch this time in order to try to, uh, last time I, I did I had a lot of squeeze out, uh, so a lot of waste. And at the prices that this costs, I'm, you know, trying to be, uh, just use the appropriate amount. So we're going to start off with a small batch here and see if that does it for us. Add it on the electric mixer. Holy cow, what a difference that makes. saying in woodworking, he who dies with the most clamps wins. It's my goal to win. So glue up is complete. We used about seven or eight ounces of the resisronol glue. Uh, obviously we got a lot of clamps at high pressure. That's what this glue requires. No major problems. Went pretty smooth. Uh, next time probably be working on some of the other keel components like the knee and the stem. Those patterns are ready to go. Um, we appreciate you being here and watching. Please like, please subscribe, share all you want. If you want to get involved, you can check out our website at www.cdreamerproject.com and you can leave a comment there or send us an email. Love to hear from you. So thanks for stopping in and uh, checking out our project. We will see you next time.